Well, I was just uh, preparing this uh, Pioneer to go on the testbed for doing a performance check on it. But uh, as I was uh, setting everything up and doing a couple of uh, pre-measurements to make sure that everything's working all right, I actually noticed that uh, this thing has a rather severe oscillation problem when it's approaching clipping. Uh, just to check this out. So right now we've got a scope hooked up to uh, one of the pre-driver transistors in the power amplifier. I've narrowed the issue down to the power amplifier, not surprising in this particular unit. And uh, let's just uh, put some power through it and uh, see what we get. So we should expect this to go non-linear at some stage, but look at that. We have major oscillation. Now that that's the normal clipping you'd expect to see, but on the top of the waveforms, we have this weird ringing going on. Now before it even starts clipping, this is the better of the channels where it just starts doing it at uh, just basically its rated power. So it's actually almost in spec, even though we are having this issue. Indeed, we are at. Uh, a bit half a percent distortion at just above the rated power. If we back it up just a slight smidgen, it will be perfectly in spec. But uh, with the other channel, it's got a major issue where it'll start doing this uh, a while before it's uh, supposed to start clipping somewhere around uh, 19, 20 volts on the output or so, which is just uh, about 50 watts. So that's no good, no good at all. And the behavior is quite different between the channels. Well, it's exactly the same waveform, but the threshold levels are just significantly different. So, I'm not entirely surprised to find this in this particular device, since all the transistors have been replaced, and most of them are more modern equivalents, which are going to be a lot faster than the originals. But, uh, yeah, it could also be due to component failure, like uh, one of these uh, small caps you see sitting around. Like the ceramic right there in the middle of the screen. One of those could have gone bad during one of the many explosions that have uh, occurred in this uh, device. But, yeah, we're going to have to track that down, because I can't do a performance analysis on, analysis on a broken amplifier, because this thing isn't behaving properly. Oh, I believe I've uh, localized the issue and solved it with that uh, very bodgy looking cap you see in there. So let's just uh, go through uh, what I did in order to resolve it because indeed we don't seem to have an issue anymore even if we turn it up. We're on a 4 ohm load now. It's specified for 110 watts which is about 21 volts. And if we go straight up to 21 volts it would have had issues at this voltage at uh, even an 8 ohm load, so there we go, 21.2 and we're at uh, well below 0.1% distortion, which is in spec, and uh, our distortion waveform is looking just fine. A bit of weirdness going on, but that, that, that's not an issue, that's just low frequency harmonics basically, so I'm happy with that. So if we have a look at the schematic, so I started by checking the uh, root of everything, which is the power supply, and uh, I probed uh, right at the start here where we've got the you know, like low, low power from feedback style circuitry. So I probed this 36.5 volt rail here, it was showing uh, not nothing, it was basically clean. When I measured on the other side of this uh, uh, R24 here, and there we saw quite significant uh, oscillation going on, so that means that any oscillation is going to be on this side of the resistor and somewhere within all this stuff, rather than being caused by the power supply, because this has a very old style regulated power supply, that's why I wanted to rule that out from the get-go. So after that I probed on the input of this uh, transistor and uh, it, it, there was some crap there, but uh, really this entire circuit seemed to be compensating for distortion that was coming from downstream, because basically every point here was showing the same symptoms. 
So I more or less ruled uh, v this uh, current mirror out and I moved on further into the power amplifier and uh, the first point I probed was uh, this uh, pre-driver transistor which uh, has been replaced from a much more modern uh, rough equivalent and uh, that's where the issue was lying this is the transistor which uh, has the bodge capacitor over it and uh, it's a 30 pico cap I didn't uh, search through my pile of cheap Chinese caps uh, for one enough to find a 15 pico to put in there uh, just in case the, the one that's on the board has junk, just gone open circuit but the 30 pico fixed it just bang the issue is uh, deleted as soon as I put that there so I'd be willing to bet that this transistor is just a tad too fast for the circuit or indeed this capacitor has gone open because uh, you would have if it, if a transistor was just too fast then you would have expected to have to use a lower value capacitor to keep up and we're, we're not dealing with super high frequency the uh, oscillations were in the range of uh, maybe 10 to 15 megahertz or so because they were showing up just fine on my 20 megahertz analog scope so it might just be that these uh, ceramic caps are, have gone bad in this device but I'm going to just uh, leave it as a bodge solution I'm going to properly solder that cap straight onto the transistor and uh, do the same thing for both channels because I really don't feel like taking this board out again especially given how long the leads on those uh, transistors are, it's just going to be quite neat and tidy even if I just uh, bodged in there. So there you go. Little side note, troubleshooting a bit of uh, oscillation. And yes indeed, both channels are now perfectly clean, pushing the rated power. Just normal harmonic distortion. And we didn't even have to add anything to the pretty pink bag of broken pioneer parts. Cheerio.